الواحد الأحد الفرد الصمد الذي لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد والحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه أبدا سرمدا ما دامت السماوات والأرض ومن بعد أن تزولا حمدا يليق بجلال وجهه وبعظيم سلطانه وبجزيل نعمائه والصلاة والسلام على نبيه محمد الصادق الأمين المبعوث رحمة للعالمين وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين أجمعين وصحابته الصالحين الغر الكرام الميامين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم اكتبنا منهم آمين On the spiritual path to God On the spiritual path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala As I recite or I repeat these words The first thought that comes to my mind and to my heart Is a supplication of our father Abraham Ibrahim alayhi wa ala rasulina salatu wa salam or a, an assertion of our father Ibrahim alayhi wa ala rasulina salatu wa salam as is stated in the Quran when he said uh, inni zahibun ila rabbi sayahdeen which means I am going to my Lord he will guide me this going of Ibrahim to his Lord is certainly not a going in the realm of space and time in the realm of physical distance for as you all know and agree Allah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not in space and time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of space and of time and that the going of Ibrahim to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the journey of Ibrahim to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a journey with his qalb to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a journey with his qalb and you're going to hear me say this word those of you who don't know it from the Arabic language I'm going to translate it at this point and it is heart but every time I'm going to say the word heart or the word qalb the intent by that is not this uh, piece of flesh inside of our chest per se but as our ulama have defined the qalb and what we mean by that in the Quran and the sunnah as we speak in this context is this subtle divine entity latifatun rabbaniya the subtle divine entity of heavenly origin of spiritual origin that has somehow a relationship and a link with the physical heart but we don't know how imperceptibly it's not a four dimensional relationship that we can pinpoint it's beyond that this is the qalb that we speak about the journey of Ibrahim alayhi wa ala rasulina salatu salam is a journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in higher dimensions not in four dimensions in the dimension of the qalb and that is emphasized or even elucidated by other ayat in the Quran when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes to us Ibrahim alayhi salam when he said wa inna min shi'atihi la Ibrahim if jaa rabbahu بقلب سليم إذ جاء ربه بقلب سليم and thus clearly clarifying that this journey and this going of Ibrahim to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with his qalb 
for Allah says subhanahu wa ta'ala again the translation of the text in meaning means is and mention Ibrahim as one of those who were in the party that is of the earlier messenger of God Nuh alayhi salam Ibrahim who came and went to his Lord with a qalb with his heart with his qalb with a qalb that is salim and the adjective salim is a very special one in contradistinction to salim salim is a a characteristic of an individual to mean uh, that means healthy and sound but the grammatical structure of salim is different uh, from that of salim salim if i am salim meaning sound and healthy means occasionally not constantly and always but if i am salim it means i am in a state of health always health has become a constant characteristics of mine qalbun salim is a qalb that is sound and healthy and sane from ultimately other than god inside other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inside by the way the essence of tawheed the essence of oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the essence rather of the affirmation of oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by us is ultimately when our hearts our qulub disengage are freed from any other attachment but God but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when that occurs we have arrived when that occurs we have arrived and that's what we mean in our spiritual terminology Islamically when the abd reaches that level wasal he or she has arrived in this world in the divine presence the consequences of that or the fruits of that in one's life in one's knowledge in one's inner peace in one's inner joy in one's visions and sightings with his or her heart of a domain beyond description are beyond human language that's the arrival the journey of ours to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a journey of our qulub is a journey of our hearts not a journey of our limbs not a journey with the legs of our physical bodies but with the legs and wings of our hearts now this journey for which we were created actually this journey for which we were created uh, you know originally where were we? we were in Jannah in the divine presence at home that's home and I really want to go back home and I'm on a journey homebound and I want to go home we had to leave home because you know why a mistake an error of lack of appreciation of what we had the companionship of God himself but the will of Allah was that we come to earth for for a purpose also we had to leave home but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says as if he's telling us through the Quran and through this journey for which we were created you can come back home you can come back home but you can come back home to me and reside therein forever forever in my presence and in my companionship if you take this journey with your heart that is salim sound and sane from the ailments and the stains that plague human hearts and that alienate human hearts away from experiencing the greatest of all joy to be at the source of happiness to be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
I want to remind myself on this occasion that few days ago Muslims would have celebrated Al-Isra wal Mi'raj night. And during that, to be very brief, remember this greatest of all journeys that Rasulullah undertook, not in space and time, in ways that are indescribable. There are certain language that was used, human for dimensional Arabic language, to express something that is not for dimensional. And that mi'raj, that ascension, that journey in which he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was made to be in the divine presence. The ultimate journey, the greatest of all experiences. The greatest of all thrills, the most resplendent heart experience, nay, human experience ever. I know scientists, great scientists who say the greatest elation and the greatest achievement of a greatest scientist in search of the unification theory and equation is to know the mind of God. What Allah and Valika Alu and Kabira. May Allah exalt, be exalted from that. But the way they expressed it is significant and is meaningful. Realizing in their own way that the greatest of all elations and of all achievements and of all joys and of all peace is to be with God. To know God's mind. To be at the source of knowledge itself. Muhammad arrived in that sense and those who follow Muhammad were given a gift to Muhammad to bring back from those upper dimension by which Allah in his munificence and love and compassion and kindness and wisdom as though he said to Muhammad take it this is their way by which they connect to me and it is their way, if they do it properly, by which they would experience some fraction of what you have experienced in my presence. And what was that? Salah. Salah was made obligatory not on earth. The only, the only Islamic value and practice, spiritual obligatoriness that was made mandatory in the upper dimensions during the Mi'raj the arrival concept and Muhammad sallallahu before taken into that journey of Mi'raj things were done before that Jibreel had descended Jibreel had come in order with the Wahi with divine revelation and the divine words and the angelic archangelic presence of Jibreel of the archangel Gabriel to cleanse further the qalb of Muhammad وسلم, to be ready for the encounter with God and before that his qalb was made ready for the encounter with the messenger of God Jibreel before that from the time he was born until the moment in the cave of Hira that great momentous experience he was being made ready for that encounter by cleansing his qalb first through that opening of the chest that all of you know I'm sure or most of you and through his practice sallallahu alayhi wasallam, through his struggle through his mujahada through his process of battling the inner self to clear the qalb, to tune his qalb at the frequency of the divine messenger. So that when finally the divine messenger came with his own frequency, they matched together. And you know what happens when two frequencies match together in the world of physical laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That is what we call resonance. And resonance is optimization of the energy of the signal. And resonance took place, yes, in the qalb of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The frequency of the space of his qalb, of the clarity and the purity of his qalb, vacuum has a frequency. 
even in the physical world and the frequency of his qalb with the frequency of Jibreel alayhi salam produced a nur imperceptible that cleansed him further and the wahi came that cleansed him further and made him ready for the encounter with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and came back to us with salah a means by which you and I can connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa wallahi alladhi la ilaha illahu if salah is performed with focus yes that which some yearn to know and may have to go through thousands of years of learning through empirical means some attain in a second the gates of space time are open for some in salah for some awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam speaks to us about that some of the ibad of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have experienced that who lived the path of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam now our qulub in this journey as they attempt to travel not in space and time and you realize we have to use words four dimensional words to describe something that is not four dimensional isn't it none of you I, I, I'm have a feeling is projecting that the travel to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is like we travel from New York to Montreal no but what else what word can we use but travel but travel we have a vision of or we have a feeling of four dimensional travel which is not a four dimensional travel now the qalb in order to achieve this journey for which it was created to go back home to go back home and forever stay at home now it has to be freed it has to be liberated so it can fly again it's another word so it can fly it can be released in its flight in its journey to soar and to glide to the door and to the gate of the home of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala